Joining me now here on the MMA Report is a fighter that's going to have the opportunity to fight in Madison Square Garden on June 14th, the Bellator show, Taylor Turner. Taylor, I, I appreciate the time. Uh, you know, I had a chance to, to talk to you when I was up in Knoxville a couple of months ago. Uh, did you, did you, was it ever in your wildest imaginations that you would have the opportunity <laughs> to fight in Madison Square Garden? Oh my gosh. You know, I mean, it, no, when it, when it was offered to me, my jaw just dropped, you know, I mean, even the, the opportunity to fight for Bellator first was fantastic. And then I think a little bit later in the conversation, they're like, oh yeah, it's Madison Square Garden. I was like, Wait, what? I mean, that just took my breath away. I was like, if there is a a place to be, a place to fight, I, I'd say that is it. So I'm super stoked about it. And yeah, I mean, it's dreams come true. Was there ever a bucket list kind of venue that you, you said before I, I, I call it, uh, you know, an active fighting career that you had on the bucket list? You know, I, I would say now that I am fighting, I've, I wasn't dreaming big enough because I wanted to put it on there in the past. I'd say any of my, um, um, like casinos that we fought at, you know, when we went and saw Vince and the MGM Grand in Vegas, like I always thought, oh, that's a really cool place. Like that would be an awesome place to have your, your name at. That's another big one. And I, I never even really dawned on me that, that Madison Square Garden could be in it. Um, you know, also traveling around the world. I love doing that with people. Oh, those venues, that'd be cool. But no, this one, it is now on my bucket list and I'm, I'm more than I could have asked for. So I've, I'm super stoked and, and super blessed. Obviously, uh, you know OSP. We all know who who he is, and he's had a chance to fight in New York. I mean, have you? Did you did you kind of pick his brain of what it was like to fight there, and and, and maybe to kind of to understand the magnitude of what it's going to be like on fight night? You know, I remember right after you know Vince fought there, and obviously he he did very well, and with my husband and stuff too. Just I kind of maybe talked to Eric a lot more about what it was like for him to walk out there and everything, just because he's at my disposal whenever I need him. And Vince is such a quiet person, you know, when it comes to the fame and all that stuff. So he's like, oh, it's cool, just a, another place, another whatever. But he even <laughs> did say, though, you know, that it, it, you know, keep your head down, keep in the game, doesn't matter where you go, it's another place, but it is pretty awesome and cool. And my strength and conditioning coach walked out there, too, and, and he just was floored. So they've all kind of piped in now that I have the opportunity to fight there and like, okay, it is really cool. And okay. But still keep your head down. It's another venue. It's another cage, same thing. So, but, you know, balancing that excitement with, Hey, this is my job and don't get too wrapped up on it. Um, it's, that's a, a new lesson. So I'm, I'm working on that right now. Obviously interesting dynamic with you and Eric, husband, wife, yes. fighter, coach, is there a separation at some point between that? I mean, obviously, MMA is the Turner family business, but it, does there become a separation at some point? You know, we haven't necessarily mastered that one out yet. We've had a lot of discussions about that sometimes, like, okay, we have to be able to take a step away and do whatever. But our lives are, both of us are so wrapped up in it. You know, we have our own promotion now, and we have a gym, and um, he's my head coach, and we help coach all the fighters, and they're, you know, nutrition coach, and, and so we talk about it a lot. Um, there are times that we do have to kind of take a step back and be like, okay, let's put that on the shelf for now, like work, let's talk about all the other stuff, and, and we have a, a great relationship and talk about all kinds of stuff. Um, so, you know, there's options. Shut the door, please. Um, so that's good. And, you know, it's been a learning experience, I'd say, for I can speak for myself. You know, if you want to talk to Eric, you'd be here and you can talk to him, too. But I've, there's been great parts about having him as my coach mm -hmm. and husband. Um, and then there's been some hard parts because, you know, he's the person I, I in the world that I care about his opinion the most. And when you don't feel like you're doing well or don't feel um, like you're, you're you know, living up to his name and his standards, I mean, it, it, take it personally. And when you come home, it's hard then as a wife to be like, I didn't really do well in the gym today. Or <laughs> he's like, no, you did. And he's like, no, I don't know if I did. I want to represent you. So I've actually struggled in some of my fights with that before. Um, and that's been an important uh, milestone for me to kind of recognize and get over and, and do a lot of uh, kind of the sports therapy through it. And uh, so it's not easy to separate it. I, it. I'm sorry for the messy answer, but that's just yeah. kind of the, the dirt of it. It's, it's wonderful. And I've always said, you know, with him by my side, I can go farther than anybody else. But because we have such a tight relationship and we know each other so better, but we also have anchors that are 
harder to, to pull up at times too. So we fight harder for it, but I think it can go farther too. And of course, things have gone great for you here in your last two fights. Now you got this one. Of course, you know, Heather, everyone knows about her boxing. As you and yeah. the team there at KMA have gotten ready for this fight, is there something that surprised you about Heather in terms of her mixed martial arts abilities? Well, um, I would say you're right. First, everybody knows about her and what a great boxer she is and, and her pedigree. Um, she trains with a good MMA gym, too. So, you know, she's got a good background. I really don't watch the film. I let Eric do that. I let that go just because, once again, in the past, sometimes when I've done that, it's easy to almost get obsessed with your opponent. Um, and be like, what are they going to do? What do they do there? And in the end, it takes away from what I can do. So as far as our game plan sort of or about her and her MMA, um, I – just know that she has worked hard and she's got a good camp behind her, but I've been doing MMA for much longer. So mm -hmm. I think that's a, an advantage for me, to be honest. So that's the extent I know about her, but I know about me and I do well. <laughs> I mean, is it one of those things of, of you just prefer not to really sit there and dive deep into a, an opponent's film and just, and, and so it's just more about concentrating on your own abilities and, and let the rest of your team kind of worry about what the opponent may be looking to do? Yes, 100%. Um, like I said, I, I, it is sometimes easy as a fighter to watch film or kind of get involved in it. And Eric was, has pulled some out, and he'll tell me when he wants me to watch stuff and, and go for it. So we're getting away from a lot of that as far as for me. Now, there are a million different fighters out there. There's a million different types of mentalities, I think. And um, for me specifically, and I know a couple of the other people on our team, Eric has found that having – you know, sitting and watching too much film and having hardcore game plans isn't the best way for us to go forward. I mean, we, we have a game plan. We have basic knowledge. I mean, you're just ridiculous if you don't study your opponent at all, you know, and you just go into it blind like that. Not a smart choice either. But for some of us, there's been times in the cage in the past that we've learned that um, if we have a game plan and then something goes wrong, you know, uh, go for a certain takedown. Oh, I didn't get it. Mm -hmm. where I'm a perfectionist, if I didn't get it, then it's like, oh, what do I do now? And it's like, no, slow, you know what you're doing. But if I'm obsessed with the game plan. So Eric, um, with me, one of my other teammates, Chris Ricker, she's very similar to me in that. We're kind of getting away from the don't don't just do this or this isn't the exact thing. You know, you don't have to do this combination into this. It's more of a, hey, these are her strengths. Let's watch out for this. This is where, you know, she might struggle some. And let's let's capitalize on that if we can. And let's go with the flow. So we're, we're focusing on that a little bit. <laughs> you, I'm sure you understand that you are going to be viewed as, as the underdog in, in this fight. Oh well, yeah. For, I, yeah. They, <laughs> I mean, it's not like I'm telling you anything you don't know, but for those people that are going to outside looking in, they're going to, you know, pull up to zone on June the 14th and they're going to say, Taylor's got no shot. What would you say to those fans? I mean, they can have their opinion, and I, I, I think as you listen to any um, interviews and, and what people say, or, you know, the Internet probably is the worst one to go for it, they're all going to say that until I go out there and showcase and do whatever, and then people are going to be like, oh, they do awesome over here. So anybody who says I don't have a shot just clearly hasn't really watched me at all either, which is fine. I don't mind being underrated. I don't mind being the underdog um, in – as I've watched my own journey, I've gone back and watched some of my fights and, and personally know where things have gone wrong. And honestly, for me, it was it, physically I've, I've developed over time, but there was a lot of um, more of the mental game for me. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes people have always talked about, oh, you're too nice to fight. I was like, no, I'm not. I'm, I love to fight. But, but honestly, after a while, I realized I think I was for a little bit because when I would watch film or you learn about your opponent, you're like, Oh, they're so nice. And they have a dog or they have kids and they're a person too. I feel bad hitting them. And it had to get to a point where I was like, Oh, wait a second. They want to be here and I'm not doing them any favors. If I go easier or, you know, if I think about them too much, like everybody wants to have a good competition. So I'm, I'm only being nice if I give a good competition. So if people go back and watch some of my fights, I'd, probably say they you know and how aggressive Heather is and, and I haven't always um, showcased that part of it um, now in my past recent fights I think I've I've given more a glimpse of me being able to turn it on and be like okay we're in here we're having fun we're doing this so they're gonna say what they're gonna say and I hope to disappoint all of them so do you at all kind of I mean because 
outside looking in, I think they would say all the pressure's on Heather. She's expected to win. It's in New York City. This is where she trains. This is where she lives. You're you're coming in from Knoxville. Do, do you view that as say like I, that all the pressure's on her, and and maybe that's something that you can capitalize in in the fight. Well, one thing I if I start thinking about her mentality too much or what she's doing, it for every for every ounce of energy I put towards her, it takes away from me. I would say, um, you know, I've she's obviously has a huge name, you know, and she's got lots of people watching her. And I know what it's like to kind of get into a smaller cage and have some people watching you and, and know what it's like to put that self-imposed pressures on. Um, and so I could assume that she's probably worked through a lot of that being in the, you know, she was boxing and get a lot more fights than you do in MMA on a regular basis. So she's probably worked through some of that, but um, I, yes, if it were, me and I know I've done that before. That's where you tend to put more of the pressures on yourself. It's because hometown, all that stuff. So, but well, she, somebody like her who is seasoned, I mean, I, like I said, I don't want to 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 bank on that or like, oh yeah, she's going to be mentally whatever because she's proven to be mentally strong too. So she could be a person that that turns it on really well. So, and that's where I'm. Like I said, I'm just I'm. She seems like an awesome person. I'm blessed to be able to even be able to fight her, but I don't want to know too much about it. So. And I know, sense? yeah, no, and, and I know with your gym, you're so, there's so many fighters who, uh, you know, are fighting June seventh or, or other Valor shows that are coming up that are getting that are getting you ready, um, you know, to prepare mm-hmm. for this fight. I mean, it, do, have you found it that the people in your gym are just as excited or more excited than you are for this fight? <laughs> they, oh my gosh, they bring tears to my eyes. How excited they are for me! I may even start crying actually right now on the phone because you're just thinking about how awesome of a team that I have. Um, one of my coaches, Joey Zonar, and, and my strength conditioning coach, Coach uh, Frankie Badia, they even like kind of put a memo out to everybody, like, everybody, you know, how much we love Taylor. And she bends over backwards for everybody all the time, and her and Eric do, and they're doing all this stuff for us. And, you know, everybody, you know, make sure you – we say sweep the shed. It comes from a, a book that we read, but mm-hmm. it's kind of saying you take your turn doing the dirty work too for her. I mean, and – People have blown up my phone. If when you want to train, I'll I'll cancel work and I come over. Um, my what about Nick Gertz or, or my, one yeah. of my one teammate Nick Gertz yesterday at practice? Look at me. He's like, "Hey, you need me to babysit? You know, or take the kids to the baseball games on Thursday?" Like I will <laughs> because that's, that's awesome. honest. I mean, I'm a mother. I'm a business owner. I'm a lots of other things, and that's where it really gets added up. So everybody's they just like I said, I have tears in my eyes right now thinking about how fantastic they are, and they are. They're super excited for me. They've seen me be a good prospect, especially the ones who've been there longer um, and kind of rise up as an amateur, you know, have my first pro win, kind of be a big thing and then crash. You know, I let those pressures get to me for a while of what I should be. And they saw me not give up and they've seen me, you know, train harder and mentally train harder. And so I've always wanted to lead by example. And I always say, you got to be careful what you ask God for because you might give it. And you can't really lead by example if you don't know what it's like to fall hard and do that. So they've seen me go all over the place and keep fighting. So yes, they are my, my, some of my biggest fans and have been amazing. I mean, you just, I mean, it's obviously awesome to, to hear what all your teammates, how they're trying to help you out, man. As someone who's uh, involved in multiple businesses, you know, one of the things I have a hard time is, is how do I, you know, adjust my schedule hand you this year, this year for you. Is it ever kind of a, a struggle of, okay, you know, obviously you're getting ready for your fight. You, you've got the gym business. You, you've got, you know, the business of, of, of Valor Fighting Challenge and, and obviously your home life with, with your husband and children. Do you ever find that as a, a tough way to balance everything and get everything in that you want to accomplish in a day? Oh, yeah, I do. Um, I'd like to say that I'm getting better at it, you know, but two footsteps forward, one step back a lot of the time with, with how you balance all that. I'm a pretty high energy person to begin with, so I'm – I like to have lots of hats. I like to do all that, but there's only a hundred percent. People are like, "Oh, you give a hundred ten percent." No, there, there's only a hundred percent of of something, and I yeah. give it all. And you know, when uh, you know we're doing construction on our on our gym and, and making it nicer and doing all that, so I'm dealing with permits in the city, and then I'm also the president of our nonprofit who tries to help for people um, who can't afford training at MMA uh, be able to do that so I'm doing a lot of fundraising for that so I'm you know in contact with people all the time and there are just some days I'll sit at Starbucks for three hours just answering 
emails on that stuff, and I didn't even get a chance to think about the fight yet. And then by the time you get to the gym, you're like, I'm just so mentally tired. I can't learn one more thing. So Mm -hmm. that is when it's important for me. And and I'd say my relationship with Eric really comes in probably one of the most beneficial spots because he can read me better than anybody else. And he knows when it's like, you're smiling, but that's not like a real smile. And, (laughs) you know, he's like, you're doing all the right things and saying all the right things and helping all the right people. But you need to take a bit, sit back, do this. And normally I fight him on it for a second. Like, no, I can do it. I'm fine. I'm great. Just put your business hat on and your mask up and you go. And it just takes a second to take it off. So that's, that's, he's a huge asset in that sense where he can read me and be like, okay, now you need to breathe. Don't train at the moment. You need a mental break or, you know, or vice versa. Don't push through, do this. So, but yeah, balancing, I'm not good at balancing. I swim from (laughs) left to right a whole lot. And so, I can't say that's my strong suit yet. I like to think I can balance my schedule, but there's just days I'm just like, yep, nope. I get I get home about six, seven o'clock at night. My wife just looks at me and she goes, You still have to work, don't you? I go, Yeah, kind of I do. <laughs> yeah, it's there. And you're right. I mean, just because you leave and, and there are times that it you can like say, Okay, I'm going to put the phone down. I'm going to put <laughs> this out of sight out of mind. But when you're right, when you have so many things and there's pressing, if you don't do it, it's not going to get done. So mm-hmm. um, Eric is, is very similar. I mean, he's the mastermind behind all of our, our successful businesses. You know, I have no problem saying, and I understand him. And there are times like I'll have to look at him and be like, okay, I know you just got on me for working too much, but you need to, you know, stop answering this question and, and at least give me a time when it's going to stop. And so we kind of try to help each other out in that, but it doesn't always work. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 a fun life, and and look forward to seeing this fight come up <laughs> here on June the fourteenth, uh, Bellator two twenty two Madison Square Garden, of course, live on the zone. Taylor, I really appreciate time. I'm sure I'll, I will see you next time up in Knoxville, uh, you know, up there promoting the Valor Hour. So uh, look forward to it. I told my wife, uh, gonna try to get her up there because I had some. I went to a good chicken and waffle spot. I found you know found one <laughs> right by my hotel, and. Uh, <laughs> I was like, yeah. Well, bring her on with you this next time, and uh, we'll give you some list of some of our my favorite places in town. I can't eat them right now, so you can <laughs> tell me about it later. How great it was! <laughs> awesome, awesome. But uh, Taylor, let all my listeners know where they can follow you on social media, and, and if there's any sponsors that uh, you want to mention that are helping you out for this one. Yeah, fantastic. Um, yeah, just give me a second with it. There's a couple of sponsors that I'd like to highlight. Impact Mouth uh, Guard. They, or one, I've been using them for years, but they um, sponsor Valor Fights and me as a fighter, so I really appreciate them. I couldn't do it. Some of my friends um, who just have built an RV park, so they've owned one for a long time. The Ridge in Pigeon Forge is brand new. Um, and another one who owns Country Cascade uh, down there, they have been huge in, in helping my career win, lose, draw kind of thing. Obviously, Knoxville Martial Arts Academy and Frankie's Body Shop are big. And um, Total Ascent Wear. And then Gilliam Insurance Company. They're new to me, and they're just fantastic people I've known and contacted me. Like, we want to help you any way you can. And then um, there's a group called Titanium. And then also the Welke Urgent Care. Um, one of my clients, she's one of the owners of all that. And when I need a medical last minute because the athletic commission's like, come down, she's like, Come on in, we'll get you in. So she's she's fantastic. And also, um, Overholt uh, Karate Studio out of Morristown, uh, Chief Overholt and their group out there are, are um, affiliate gyms of ours, and they're fantastic. So that's good. And uh, but yeah, you can follow us on. Just look me up through Knox Martial Arts Academy or Valor Fighting Challenge. That's probably one of the best ways. And um, Frankie's Body Shop, and then just Taylor Turner MMA athlete. So, but thank you so much for having me. I really do appreciate it. It's awesome to get a chance to share my story. So. I'm very grateful.